In this video, we're going to do an example that uses the divergence theorem. I had introduced the divergence theorem in the previous video in my vector calculus playlist. The link to that is down in the description. And in this video, we're going to do a concrete example of it. So let's first recall what the divergence theorem said. It was talking about a scenario where we had some closed, smooth surface. And we were asking the question, well, what is the flux out of that surface by some vector field? That is the left-hand side, the surface integral of f dot n gives the outward flux. And then what was so powerful about the divergence theorem was that we could relate that to integrating a triple integral over the entire volume that was enclosed by the surface of the divergence del dot f. So in the specific example we've talked about, I have some field here. The field has components x, y, z in each of the three components. And then I'm trying to figure out what is the outward flux across the unit cube. So drawing my axes, what I mean by the unit cube is that it is a cube going from 0 to 1 in all three axes. Something like that. So this is 0 and 1 and 1 and so forth. Now, I could, if I wanted to, compute the flux across the surface without the divergence theorem. This surface has six sides, and so the flux across the surface would be the sum of six different integrals, and each of those I could do. And actually, it's a decent exercise for you to pause and try to do, particularly because three of the sides are going to be zero, given the field that I have. It's not so bad. But in this video, we're not going to compute the flux directly. We're going to go and use the divergence theorem, which instead of having six different surface integrals for the six sides, we're going to have one integral that's going to be very easy to compute. So I'm going to use the right side of the divergence theorem. So giving myself a bit more space, the first thing I need to do is compute the divergence of f. So this is the sum of the partial respect to x of the first component, the partial respect to y of the second component, and the partial respect to z of the third component. So first component here, we'll maybe call it the m is x, y, and z. The partial of that, with respect to x, is equal to y, z. Then I'm going to take the partial of the second component, which we often call n, partial of that with respect to y, which is going to leave me with an x, z. And then finally, the third component, which we often call p, partial of p with respect to z is going to give me a x, y. And so what I'm interested in computing then is the triple integral of this divergence. So I'll just copy and paste y, z plus x, z plus x, y. I'll put that in brackets, and then I'm going to do an integral with respect to volume, a little dx, dy, dz. In more complicated examples, maybe you're going to care about which order the, the dv you do. Is it dx, dy, dz, or some other permutation? And if the region was easier to describe in terms of the limits one way or the other, you might have a preference. But in here, it's the unit cube. So x is going between 0 and 1, y is going between 0 and 1, and z is going between 0 and 1. That's all I get. And by the divergence theorem, this entire thing better be equal to that surface integral, the f dot n d sigma. That is the flux across the cube. Okay, so let's go and try to actually do this computation now. It shouldn't be so bad for us. Well, first I'm going to do the integral with respect to x. So I'll leave the outer two integrals up, 0 to 1 and 0 to 1. The first term is yz. It integrates to yz times x between 0 and 1 is just going to give me y times z. There is an x in the second term, so it integrates to x squared over 2 times z, and then evaluated between 0 and 1 is just going to give me z divided by 2. And likewise for the third term here, I have an x, it's going to integrate to x squared over 2, multiplied by the y, evaluated to 0 and 1, I just get that half, so plus a y divided by 2. And then I've already integrated out the dx, so I just have a dy dz remaining. Let's do the next most inner integral. So I have just the outside one remaining here. So y now is when it's being integrated. So integral with respect to y. So the integral of yz becomes y squared over 2 times z. Plug in 0 and 1 into that. And I'm going to get z divided by 2. Then a z divided by 2 integrates to z divided by 2 times y. Plug in the 0 and 1. I just get z divided by 2. And then the final term is y over 2 integrates to y squared over 4 plug in the 0 and the 1, and I'm going to get a 1 quarter. And then all of this is integrated with respect to z, and we're going to get our final answer very shortly here. So z over 2 goes to z squared over 4, so that's going to give me a value of a quarter when I plug in the limits. Same thing, I have another quarter, and a final quarter, and my final answer here is 3 quarters. 
So in this example, the divergence theorem worked really well because we got this one integral when we applied the divergence theorem and we're going to use a triple integral. And it was a triple integral that we could do. It was easy to find out the limits of integration. It was just a unit cube that we were all zero up to one. And so we could just execute that integration and we have finally found the outward flux across this blocks given by this particular field. And in general, whether you want to use the divergence theorem or just the standard old flux integrals that we've seen before, just depends on the computational efficiency of the problem. If you can do the flux integrals without the divergence theorem, great. If it's easier to do with the divergence theorem, that's great too. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do give it a like for the YouTube algorithm. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and we'll do some more math in the next video.